you can see my my crazy hairdo this is a mullet that's coming in it's going to be glorious right now we're partying in the front and we're more business in the back but we're going to fix that it's going to be less mohawky more mullety you can trust me all right, so I've had a lot of folks ask if I could do a video, sort of a tutorial on how to use Guitar Pro, and I'm gonna do that. If you don't know me already, because I imagine different people will see this video, my name is Marcel. I normally do bluegrass guitar lessons, but today we're just gonna talk about Guitar Pro. So when you start up Guitar Pro, you should see something like this. Your templates will appear here. If you have templates, we'll talk about that later. But let's say I just wanna start a new file. I'm gonna go over here to new file. This is gonna come up. It's gonna ask me what kind of guitar I'm writing for. Some of this has to do with the sort of the MIDI settings. If you use the playback, how that's gonna work. I am writing for an acoustic steel string guitar, so I'm gonna say, okay, let's do it. Now, before I go any further, I wanna adjust what I'm seeing because right now this is super tiny on screen. So if I go to the magnifying glass up in the left-hand corner, I can hit fit to width, and then it's just gonna push everything in so it's the width of my screen. I love looking at it like this. And if I wanted to start writing something in, I can. So I'm gonna do that uh, in a couple different ways, and I'm gonna tell you a couple shortcuts along the way. So I use all of my number keys at the top of my keyboard. I don't use my number pad. The reason why I use all of the keys sort of at the top of my keyboard there is because it's more intuitive like a guitar is laid out. Right, all the frets, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, they're all sort of laid out in that way. Whereas on the name number pad, they're not really laid out that way. So it's, I don't know, there's some more <laughs> dissonance in it for me intellectually. Your minus and plus keys are gonna change the duration of the note. So right now, um, this would be a whole note, half note, quarter note, eighth note, sixteenth note. 32nd note, 64th note, etc. You can actually see it changing the selection in the left hand side here. Right, whole, half, quarter, eighth, and as I hit that plus symbol, it scoots through all of those. If I did want to insert a rest, say I want to hit and insert a quarter note rest, all I have to do is hit enter, and it writes that for me. Now I'm going to write some eighth notes after this. If I want to write some eighth notes, all I have to do is start typing in my number keys, and I can use my arrow keys on my keyboard to move left and right to write in where I want to write in. So in this case, um, uh, you bluegrass musician fans, uh, you might notice that I'm writing out a break for, let's say, Bury Me Beneath the Willow. Um, and you can see really quickly, I can just start, start typing in some of these details. Right? And I'm just writing in enough that I have something to work with to show you everything else. <laughs> <laughs> and that is indeed enough of a break for us to start looking at. Generally, when I do that, when I'm typing, I know you can't see my keyboard, but I have my left hand up on all the numbers. I have my right down, my right hand down on the uh, directional uh, pad, right, to see which way I want to go. If I have to change the duration, I can just reach over with my hand and change that. That's all that's going on. Now, the next thing you're probably going to write, you know, if you have this much, you can write down the numbers and you can figure out the, the durations, the eighth notes, quarter notes, whatever subdivision you're using. You're probably going to want to look for articulations like camerons and slides and stuff like that. Um, let's say right here, instead, I want a slide, like an eighth note slide right here. I want it to look like that. Well, how did I do that? So first of all, I changed this to just two eighth notes. On a PC, my shortcut is alt Control s and there's my shortcut for like a basic slide. If I just go over that and hit S, I get this tie on top. I'm not a huge fan of the tie. I believe you use the tie when you're changing positions and you use the other one when it's not a position change, something like that. Um, in any case, I find it kind of cumbersome in the notation. So I'd rather just see this normal slide all the time. So I use Alt Control S. If I wanted to make that a hammer on, I would simply hit my H key and that turns it into a hammer on. If you're not into the keyboard shortcuts, you can also just mouse over here and you can select the articulation that you want out of all these different features that they have. So for instance, here is the slide right here. That little blue notation lights up on the left-hand side here. Maybe I don't want that slide, maybe instead I want the hammer on. And here it is right here, it says H and P, hammer on or pull off. Um, you can tell I do not use that feature very much. I am definitely a shortcut kind of guy, so that's how I would do that. There are a couple other shortcuts that will help you out. Um, one of them, for instance, is that if you want a new measure somewhere, if you hit Control Insert, it'll give you a new measure. So I know everything just jumped around, but I'm saying that I want a new measure in between these two bars. So I'll hit Control Insert, and it'll give me a new measure in between those bars. Hit Control Z to take that away if I wanted to. Um, if you want more note values, you can also just hit your arrow key to the right and it'll keep giving you more and more measures to work in. 
Um, if you want to insert them somewhere where they already exist, you just hit the insert key <laughs> at the top of your keyboard. You can keep getting more beats in your measure. You'll notice if your measure doesn't have enough beats in it, Guitar Pro will turn it red. It's letting you know that this measure does not count out correctly. So I might go into this measure and I might, maybe I want to do a little arpeggio. I'll do my hammer on. I'll do some little pieces of the chord and then my measure counts out correctly. It'll no longer be red. There is a design mode for deciding how many measures you have in each line. And that's turned on over here. It's actually already on, but it's this little triangle with two arrows on either side. I can turn on design mode. The shortcut for it is control alt D and it allows me to reshape each measure individually. So I can decide how big each measure is. I believe I reset that by clicking on this zero over here, this little O. And this plus or minus removes measures or adds measures to that line. So two measures on the line, three measures on the line, four measures on the line, five measures on the line. However much I want on that individual line, I can control like that. It's pretty handy. Me personally, um, I really like it when I get a nice way to see the form. So in this case, the break would start here. And I want to see four measures of the break right here before I move on to the next line, right? This is like a little pickup phrase, so it's okay. It can sneak on, but I like to see four measures of music on each line, you know, making allowances for pickup phrases and stuff like that. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to fill out this arrangement real quick before we move any further. So here's our little bluegrass guitar arrangement at Bury Me Beneath the Willow. Now I did copy and paste some stuff, so it's not all super unique language, but hey, I did this quickly. You know, appreciate it for what it is. So let me show you some tricks that will really help you out if you're writing some arrangements on your own. Number one, there is a trick called Bar Arranger. So hypothetically, if you're not very good at counting, Bar Arranger can save you the trouble. I'll show you what I mean. So let's say I have this, uh, this last lick right here. Ba -ba -doo -da 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 -da. Maybe I accidentally wrote more of this in this measure than I intended, right? I accidentally have it like this. Guitar Pro is telling me the measure is wrong. I'm not very good at counting. I don't know how to fix it. I can go up to tools and I can hit bar arranger and Guitar Pro will do its best to push things where they belong. So in this case, it's written some rests here, but it's put this note in the measure where it belongs. If I had to clean that up even more, of course, I might turn this into a whole note. But Guitar Pro is just there to help you whenever you hit Bar Arranger. It's trying to fix the counting for you if you can't figure it out yourself. It's a very nice little tool. Um, it helps out in a lot of situations, actually, especially when you do know what the correct count is, but you don't want to individually move notes around. Guitar Pro will just move a bunch of them for you, which is really, really convenient. Oh, another really useful feature is the transpose features, which people don't take uh, enough advantage of. But let's say I really like this whole arrangement, but I want to practice playing an open A. Well, I can take this and I can press this, uh, this note in the arrow in the left hand side here. I can hit that twice. And that'll scoot it up into the key of A, right? It moved everything two frets higher. So now from here, I have my entire arrangement in A now, instead of the key of G. But I might want to do some different things to it, right? I might want to not, I might now want to play all of these notes in the exact place that they're written here. So I might take some of these notes and move them around. For instance, if I take this fifth fret note, if I hold down my alt key and I push the up arrow, it'll push these onto the open E string. It's a quick way for it to fix your arrangement. So I might just go through and find some different places where I can play some of these notes, maybe make my arrangement make a little more sense. It's a really quick way to change the key of things. And then that alt plus up or down arrow to find things on different strings is a really quick way to change your arrangement to a different different possession on the fretboard or you know, to a different key altogether. I won't get too much into it, but you can imagine the possibilities. There's a lot of them. It is a really cool concept. <laughs> so if you want to enter chords, that's another thing you can do in this left hand panel right here. There is a chord button. And if you click on it, this little dialog box pops up. This is going to be like our library of all the chords we're going to use for the song. We hit this plus button to open up this dialog box where we can enter chords. So I could go ahead and I could write in my chords like this and all of them will appear super neatly. And the computer will try to name the chord as well as possible. Sometimes it does things I'm not a fan of, but for the most part, it names chords pretty well. So there's my G, C, and D. These are the chords that I need. And all I have to do is put my cursor where I want the chord to appear. And it will. There's G, C, 
here's G and D. Continuing on and on and on and on and on. And I populated my song with all the chords that I need. A lot of times when I'm working, I'll actually fill this chord box in first and I'll just leave it over here on the left while I work so I can pop in a chord whenever I want. Other times I'll just do it at the end. If you if you have a, a, a mouse with multiple keys on it, multiple keys, with other buttons in it, like a gaming mouse, I have a couple extra buttons here. Of course, I can push in my scroll wheel and I have another little button right here. I've programmed all of those to be different functions in Guitar Pro. One of them is to enter a new chord. Um, so that's a really nice way to to increase your workflow if you're gonna be spending a lot of time in Guitar Pro. Another thing you might be doing is you might be inputting labels. Actually, I already put one in right here when I wrote break starts. I believe the shortcut for that is control, no, it's shift insert. Um, so if I wanted to, I could hit shift insert and I could write, once again, something like break starts. If you want, you can also add a rehearsal letter, which is when you get this like big letter A next to it. That's all that that is. Um, that's actually one of the things that's hot keyed on my mouse is to also add in these labels, which is really, really helpful. Um, I love when things are labeled easily so I can find my way around the piece. If you want to delete a chord, all you have to do is hover over it and then hit delete and it'll go away. Sometimes some of the chord functions don't work if you also have the design panel open. So if I have the design panel open to move measures around and I try to delete a chord, it won't let me highlight that chord and delete it. I have to turn design mode off and then I can edit the chords again. So if I was also writing this and I wanted to um, add some kind of performance notes, I can hit T as a text shortcut. You know, I, I could write something like, play like wind <laughs> blowing over the open water. I love bizarre performance notes like that. Um, but you, <laughs> you could write something like that if you wanted to. Whoa, obviously not gonna leave that there. <laughs> now I've talked a handful of times about that left-hand panel, but there is a right-hand panel too, and that's where you would write in your song info. So maybe here in the title, I'd write bury me, whoops, bury me beneath the willow is the name of this tune. Artist, it's actually a Tim Pan Alley tune. There is a songwriter for it, but I'm just gonna write, uh, it's called traditional folk song, even though that is an outright lie, like I said. Now in this right hand panel, there is also a button for the style sheet that says open. So if I open the style sheet here, I get this window. This is the most powerful <laughs> window for deciding how things look. I can control all kinds of different aspects. So let's try to create a look right now. So maybe I want to mess with the global score proportions. This decides how big your music will end up looking. So if I make this smaller and hit apply, you can see all the music on the page got smaller. And that's pretty small, it's pretty hard to read. If I want it bigger, I could do it like that. If you do it too big, eventually it will distort a little bit, but why don't we leave it like that? Um, there's also your uh, rhythm proportions and you can turn this on and off so it affects font size and chord sizes. Of course, you can see all of that. You can search through these on your own. Let me show you some settings that people always ask me about. One of them is chord diagrams. So some people want them visible in the score which means just like the sort of the books you see off the rack um, that have the little chord shape built into the song. That's how you turn that on and off. It's right there in the style sheet. If I go back to the style sheet and maybe let's say I don't want that and I don't want the chords on top. Well, that's how I get rid of those. This is how I normally do my arrangements. Back to the style sheet again. Um, let's go to the systems over here. Uh, there's so many things you can control. I can't begin to show you all of them. This is where you can select your fonts for the header and footer. So maybe I don't want to do Times New Roman. I could change what font I want to do. Look at all these cool fonts. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, <laughs> so on and so forth, right? Of course I can change more fonts over here. Then there's a bunch of notation uh, features too, little tiny things that you can change. I'll actually show you some of those that that I like to change too. Um, for instance, if I go over here in the right-hand panel, I just went from song to track. Under track, I can decide if I want to show the traditional sheet music or just the tab, maybe just the sheet music. So let's say I only wanna show tab. I really don't like the look. I really, really don't like the look of the rhythmic notation extending into the tab, into the strings of the tab, right? So if I go to the style sheet and I go to the notation tab on the far right, I can turn off extend rhythm inside tablature. And suddenly it looks like this, which I find much easier to read. Now, if you 
come up with a way that you really like things looking, you can save them as a template. So in my style sheet here, maybe I really like the look of what we've done here. I can go to options and I can hit save style. Now I'm actually gonna load a style. All of the lessons with Marcel tabs look like this. And this is sort of my saved look, how my songs look. That's part of it. There's a couple of other things that I do. Um, one thing to really make a tab look nice is to change the beaming. So I go to the beginning of the music, hit this 4-4 button, and I decide how I want my eighth notes to look. That makes a huge difference, making a tab look more professional. Uh, maybe this tempo marking, it's a little bit superfluous, so I don't really need that. I might turn that off so we can't see it. Something like this looks a little more, a little more pro to me, of course. I might also want the right key signature. Up there in the left-hand side, there's a key signature button. So I'll put it in G. Maybe there's an accidental right here. That's not an A sharp, that's actually a B flat. There is a button over here for things that are enharmonic. Let's find that. It's this little flat and sharp right here. It's so funny to, to, to click the button because I never do that. The shortcut is Control-Alt-8. And that's what I always hit when I'm typing these in. It is also, yet again, one of the buttons that's mapped to my mouse is Control Alt 8, so I can fix these really quickly. Just a good idea if you want to try that. Now, if you're going to be writing a lot of things like this, um, what you might do is you might take everything that you've done and you might delete it. <laughs> and then you could go over here to File and you could hit Save as Template. And you could save this so every time you needed to write a piece of music like this, sort of the style sheet is already decided, your eighth note beaming is decided, your key signature is in there, you have a template for how you want that to work. And that is how I normally work. So if I go to File, um, New from Template, I have a main template in G. And it's basically what I open every single time that I work. All my information is set and it's ready to go. I highly recommend working from a template so you don't always have to um, change how things look and go through that whole process. Now, if you're worried about playback, you might have to mess with the tempo a little bit. So up right here in the middle of the screen, there is a bunch of info on this tempo stuff. So I'm gonna turn off hide automation here so we can see that in the music again. Once again, it says 120 now. I can hit okay. If I want the tempo to change halfway through a piece, I can go to where I want it to change. Just click my cursor somewhere in there, go back here and I can write in a new marking, like 200. You can see that the tempo has increased right at that moment. I don't wanna do that for this particular tune, but that is how you do that. There's lots of other things you can do that I'm not gonna get into right now. This is a very powerful piece of, of software. If you wanted to write for other instruments, there is a tab down here where you can add more instruments. I encourage you to go look around on your own and find some of that out. Um, in the track panel, of course, you can decide how you want your MIDI configured. So when you hit play, it actually makes sound. Um, mine is not set up because I, I hardly ever use the playback. I'm sorry, I wish I could tell you about that, but I just don't know. So I know I'm trying to fit a bunch of stuff here in the end, but I do wanna show you that if you want to export things over here, you can hit export and you can save it as a PDF or you can save it as a PNG if you're gonna do some video editing with it. You might save it as a GPX so someone in a different piece of software can edit it. There's lots of things you can do here with the different export types. There's just so much good stuff about this program. I'm just doing this off the cuff. I'm not obviously going to get to everything, but hopefully that was enough to get you started with Guitar Pro. Um, I'm going to play this for you real quick, so that way you can see that I wrote something worth listening to. Uh, if, you, <laughs> if you had a good time, consider hitting subscribe. If, if you're new around here, I'm glad you came and hang out for a second. If you're a normal Lessons with Marcel fan, thanks for tolerating the totally different kind of video. Um, I hope you all have a good time working with Guitar Pro because it is the software that I use all the time and this has not been a sponsored video or anything. I do have an affiliate link in the description. If you want to pick up a copy of it and help the channel, I really appreciate that, but that's obviously not what this is about. Um, I hope you enjoy working with this piece of software once again. Let me play this for you. Mm -hmm. 